Hello, my squishies. Hello, we've already got comments in. It's Friday night. It is the first Friday of the month. It is felt a long time. Welcome. Well, so I record these live. So while we're waiting for people to log in and everybody telling me that the sound is good. Hello, hello. I will pre <laughs> I will pre-warn everybody that <laughs> nonsense is afoot. I will ramble complete nonsense for the rest of this hour or so video while we felt along Nessie. Uh, feel free to mute me, turn the volume down, fast forward, rewind, slow me down, all those things. <laughs> and because I do these live, we get live comments so I can respond to people in real time. If you're watching this after the fact, I obviously can't respond in real time, but if if you hit the live replay down the bottom, you can see, or comment replay, you'll be able to see what I, who I'm talking to and what nonsense we are getting on with. The two, two troublemakers are already here, along with my wonderful parents, I can see in the comments. Hi, mum and dad. Um, but yeah, so while we're waiting for everybody else to just jump in, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to needle felting for those of you who haven't felted before. So in your kit, you'll have a foam mat. This is what you felt onto. This protects your surfaces, makes felting easier. <laughs> yeah, too much silliness. See, this is where I get very easily distracted with the comments, so I apologise in advance. So we've got your foam mat, we've got our felt here. So this is pre-felt, that is, it's Shetland pre-felt. So it's wool that's just been slightly felted and is ready to take our picture. I've also drawn on what, uh, a basic design for us to follow tonight. You've also got in your pack your felting needles. So let's get it up to camera. Can you see that? So there's the sharp spiky end and there's an end with a hook. So this end's barbed. Please do not stab yourself. Um, it can also break. If it breaks, make sure and find all the pieces and dispose of it safely. I have a hard plastic tub I put all my broken needles in and then dispose of that safely once it's full. You can use the needles just like this. But in your kits, I've also included a needle handle. And to use this, you pull out the wee peg there, pop your needle in the groove with the hook over the thinner end, and then pop it back in and you're ready to stab. But I'll show you that one more time. So I'll do it a bit closer to the helmet. So you pull the peg out, you'll see there's a wee groove on it pop the needle in the groove with the hook over the thinner end and pop the thinner end back in there. But like I say, you don't have to use this. I Some people love it, which is why I include them in the kits. Some people swear by these and you can get these with multiple... Where's my... I put it away somewhere safe. You can get, you can get these with that hold multiple needles. Uh, if you hear slight barking, there is a puppy underneath my feet. Oh, well, I say she's a puppy. She's 11 months. Ooh, there was grumbles. Uh, she's 11 months old now, but we've just been out to the park in the rain, throwing a ball around for half an hour. So in theory, she should sleep. But you never know. But she is adorable and very soggy just now. So you can... <laughs> this is nonsense. The rambling thought processes. Um, so you, like I say, you can use the handle. Some people absolutely adore it and prefer it. I just use them holding them because I like to be able to swap between one, two and three needles at a time depending on what I'm doing. And another important thing about the needles is when you're stabbing, always stab in a straight line. Try and never bend the needle because that's when the needle is more likely to break. So in and out, never in and bend. And the last and most important part of the process is our tops or roving. So this is wool. This is mostly Shetland wool that has come off the sheep. It's been washed, dyed and brushed and is ready to make a picture. 
So to work with this, there's a few handy tricks. So what you want to do is have your hands nice and far apart and just gently pull and you'll see you get little sections out. So this is the length of the, the hair, the wool that was on the sheep. So if you have your hands too close together, you're pulling against the hair itself. So it's not going to come apart. So you want to have your hands nice and far apart and gently pull to get little sections out. And if there's any twist, it's also not going to pull apart because twist is what makes yarn. So you want to have it untwisted, hands nice and far apart and gently pull. And I normally say less is more when we're needle felting. So I might say, um, I'll say that a lot. You'd be surprised how little of this you need. Okay, have I forgotten everything else? Oh, good question, Sylvia. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's probably a way. Um, comparing them against one that you do know is the size. So needles, that's a very good point. Before we get felting, we're off on a tangent already. Um, the needles come in various sizes. They also come in different shapes and different directions. So the barbs on these are pointed in a way that when I stab in, the felt's going to go through, you'll see here, through to the back. But you do get ones that are reverse felting needles that will pull it out. You also get star shaped, these are triangular ones, you get star shaped ones, which just gives you more Barbie area. Barbie area is around the side. I think that's right. Um, and they're measured on a gauge system. So these are 38 gauge, I want to say, which just means the thickness is 38 somethings. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, because I know that Robin is a wonderful felter in the comments. <clears throat> and she, she'll help me out here. The larger the number, the bigger, the larger the number, the smaller the needle. Yeah, listen to Robin. I'm going to start felting. Everybody listen to Robin in the comments. Because her YouTube channel, also, ah, oh, Sylvia, I need to talk to you. I'll, I'll chat later on in the video. <laughs> but Robin's uh, a wonderful felter as well. And her YouTube channel is wonderful. So I'm taking some of the lovely uh, loch blue let's call it and I'm going to go around just really gently pulling little sections and placing them on the felt avoiding where we're putting Nessie Yes, if you take a photo, we can have, we can, if you give me something to scale it with, we can try and, <laughs> but don't use a banana for scale. That's not useful, because what size are bananas? We can work out. Yeah, that's amazing, the intricacies of different types of needles is wonderful. <gasps> Ooh! Wait, are you working on kittens or if your kittens let you? And so, so, so now I've placed it roughly down. I'm going to take a couple of needles and just roughly and without any real precision just now, stab it in a few times and just to start locking it into place. Now we're going to be doing a lot of stabbing. So don't worry too much about getting it well felted in just now. Because A, the really nice thing about this stage of felting is if you put something in the wrong place, you can literally just pull it up and move it because we've only lightly felted it in. Once it's more felted in, that's slightly harder, but you can still do it. Um, and B, we're wanting to build up layers. So I've kind of filled in all the blue bits. So I'm going to add a few little white. <laughs> I'm getting just so I love this distraction this makes me so happy uh, 
<gasps> oh, that sounds excellent. But can your kittens be in the video, please? So I'm taking some of the white now and I'm going to put in essentially some waves. Just working my way around. Not with any, at the moment, without any real intent. And I'm also going to, this might sound <laughs> counterproductive, but I'm putting some blue over the white because we're going to start building up layers and texture. And that is the joy of needle felting because the more layers you put in, because some of this will show through, some of it will hide. It's just building up shapes and colours and textures. Oh, I should probably say now, we're not going to get this in airports finished tonight. So tonight we're going to get all of the main bits in and get it all there but I want you guys to put it down after this hour and come back in a couple of days and that in those couple of days oh that's my stomach gurgling if anybody heard that I haven't had dinner yet I know mum and dad are currently sitting down eating their delicious homemade fish and chips and I'm very jealous <laughs> where was I what, what was I saying oh yeah come back in a couple of days and we're just going to give it a good felt all over in a couple of days and just play with any tiny bits that need played with. So don't worry about getting this finished tonight. Oh, excellent. That's the best way. Peanut, the, my dog is called Peanut, has discovered that she loves little felt balls as well. So I throw them about for her and she chases them around like an absolute maniac. Now we're taking some of the darker green and we're going to start filling in Nessie. Now Nessie is... Yeah, if it's... Oh, we've got controversy in the comments about fish. Mum and Dad weigh in. Well, obviously you love fish and chips. Oh, very important. So to make the shape of Nessie, we're going to make the... Oh, words. It's been a very long day in the shop, so my, wor <laughs> my words are <laughs> excitable. Um, we're going to let the material help us. So I want this to be a nice curve around there. So I'm just going to take a small length of this, felt in... A little bit at that end and then let the wool essentially make the curve for me and then again so as I'm stabbing it down I'm pulling it and pulling it round and that it's the, the yarn the wool wants to do it <laughs> oh all, hello peanut says hello to Oliver There you go. And so I'm going to fill in and don't worry if you're not covering up the edges, we will fill all that in later. I just want to like when you're painting, we're filling in the basics and then we're going to work on the details afterwards. And the joy of felting, like I said, is if something's not like where you want it to be, you can just pick it up and move it. It's wonderful. So I'm now going to take some of the lighter green and I'm putting that underneath Nessie's chin and following the curve round. And again, at this point in time, don't worry about it looking like a mess. Don't worry about it not being in exactly the right place. This is the, this is the messy beginning bit. Oh, she meowed. I would say, no, Peanut is fast asleep now. She's gone. She's had a very busy day in the shop helping customers. Or 
more like training customers to go and pick the ball up for her and throw it for her. Very important point. Pay attention before I get distracted by the comments again. Every so often, you want to pull this off of the mat and pop it back down again. Because it'll get really stuck on the mat if you let it go for too long. And when you pull it up for the first time, you'll notice it stretches slightly. That's totally fine, perfectly normal. Just scooch it back into place because it's not properly felted yet. When it's better, I was about to say, when it's well felted, when it's more felted, better felted, you'll see this one here, which I've, you can see, compare the backs. So this one is a much more felted than this one. This has got a lot less give in it, a lot less stretch. And that's what this, that's what your one's in theory going to become. Okay, I have to read some comments. I've never had river fish. Yeah, dad's, dad's oak, 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 no, oat. <laughs> I can't words. Oat coated salmon fresh from the fish not salmon i had it fresh from the fish man is delicious so let's get this in so we've got nessie's body essentially disappearing in the distance so in a line from there round so i'm going to stab that in and let it just curve itself pull it down and then flip it back and again just now we're just really lightly felting in because we might move this I reserve the right to not like where I've put it and to change where I've put it this is about having fun and not worrying too much about what we're doing and then I'm going to do it on the same line there another C shape hoop for the next little bitty and then her little tail. We will have some Nessie facts uh, later on in the video. The tail is just a straight line. Now is a very good time to take your hoop that should be in your kit and to check it all fits and it doesn't. So. I like where that is sitting. I like where that one's sitting and that one, but I think the tail is going to get lost. So I'm going to pull that down a little. Did you see how easy that was to move it? Ah, so easy. And pop the tail down there. So then I can move that there and that. Do I want to move this a little bit closer? The joy of needle felting. We can just shove it. There we go. So I'm putting that a little bit closer, moving that slightly. And then that goes there and there. I'm a lot happier with that. I want her neck to go a little bit more that way. There we go. Cool. Right, let's continue. Now we can start putting stuff in a little bit. Felting it a little bit more. English, good. <laughs> oh, love Robin, that's so cute. He is just your little hitchhiker. Yeah, I heard that. I, <laughs> I heard that about... That's the difference between cats and dogs. Is generally people spend a lot of time choosing and picking their dog and getting the right breed and all that. Whereas cats generally just find you. you. You were walking home one day and there's a cat and it's now yours. I don't know if that's true, but I, I like that to think that's true. So I'm just going to do a little bit of felting all over. And then I'm going to fill in any gaps. So I've got gaps around his face, around her face even. I'm going to just fill up. So I'm happy with the face shape. Just fill up those gaps. I've got gaps there now. 
But again, I'm really lightly felting in. This isn't, we're not overworking it just now. We're just letting it build up. Right, well, so while I remember, Sylvia, I have a terrible confession to make. I am so sorry. I am a terrible person. I lost, I lost the name of your channel because Sylvia also has a YouTube channel for quilting, which is wonderful, which I would say is wonderful, but I haven't seen it because I couldn't find the thing. Could you possibly, not in a live comment because they disappeared on me, but in a comment on a video that stays after the fact, send me a link to your YouTube channel so I can pop it in the comments of the last video and so I can watch you. Because I'd like to put a voice to the name in the same way that Robin joins <laughs> Robin joins me as I'm working. Well, I, let, I put her videos on in the background. But Robin doesn't do them live, so I can't cause nonsense on her videos. Okay. Now comes a little bit of... Thank you! A little bit of fun. So... We need to work out where to put the eye because the eye is the next bit I'm going to pop on. And the eye, a lot of the time, will make or break your Nessie. So I've got a handy cheat <laughs> because I kept trying to put the eye in different places before and it always looked wonky and I was pulling it out and I was very annoyed. Yada, yada, yada. So I didn't include this in the kit but I'm going to assume everybody has a pair of scissors and a bit of paper. So cut out a tiny circle and draw a black splodge in the center of it. That's going to be roughly the size of your eye. And then you can practice where you would like the eye to go. I thought I was genius when I came up with this idea. I'm pretty sure this is not genius, but in my head it is. Oh, yes, when you do lives in the future, please let me know. So now we can... Okay, we're voting in the comments where we want the eye to be. So we can put it further back. We can put it further forward. We can put it in the middle. You've got... This gives you like... Because you can put the eye essentially anywhere on your Nessie. Like quite far forward and it looks really cute. Or quite far back, looks a bit more dinosaur -y. Yes. So where where are we putting the eye on this Nessie? It's just it's like the total cheats way to Do I like it forward? Because this head shape is slightly different from this head shape. Which is totally fine. All your Nessies will look completely different. They're all unique and all wonderful. Okay. For one in the comments for <laughs> for further back. And vote two in the comments for further forward. I'll give you two minutes. I like the derpiness of, of the back. I think I might be going for back this time. Okay, we've got uh, two votes for further back. Mom and Dad, you're the, you're the deciding factor. <laughs> yeah, for smug Nessie. <laughs> I think mum and dad are ignoring me and eating. So further back it is. Right, so now take a bit of your white. And it is a surprisingly small, I don't know if you can even see it, a surprisingly small amount of white. And I'm going to kind of scrumple it up into a, a bally circle. Dum, dum, dum. And then I'm going to plop it down where we decided the eye was going to go. I'm going to try and make it roughly circle shaped, but you can take a little bit more and round it out. There we go. I've got our circle shaped eye. Again, just now, don't be too particular about how well felted it in because we're going to keep going over it and keep changing it. Then we're taking a little bit of the brown. <laughs> I mean, when I say a little bit, like, 
can you even see that tiny bit? I'm scrumfling it right up into a tiny ball and just a couple of stabs at the moment and that's it in. Look at the little face! You're buffered! How very dare you! Okay, so <laughs> what time are we at? We're still doing good for time. So we're still at the rough stage, so don't panic if it's looking like mine is looking a bit excitable just now. I'm going to start putting some water rings around, I don't know if you can see them, around where she's coming out of the water. So I'm just taking little bits of the white and wherever the head essentially is coming out of the water, you're going to put in a little wake or a wave and have them uh, words, words, can't do words, like trail, trailing, that's what I'm looking for, trailing behind her so that they then join up with the next part of her body that is coming out of the water. So again, that bit would be coming out of the water there. So I'm going to put some white in there and have it trailing round this time. So this side, then this side, the wake's going to go. You can see how rough and ready this is. We've put no effort into this yet. Don't worry. And again, so this little bit is where it's going to touch there. So just a little one round there. And again, a little one round there. And the final one, well, not final one, there's going to be some coming around that side. Round the tail and going kind of off and up. Oh, I missed that one. Wait, is anybody else buffering? Oh, my speed's okay. Yeah, my speed's look okay. Nope, not buffering. Excellent. And now going around where you've gone before, does that make any sense? Going... Oh, yes, Robin, please do. I, I learned from you. I bow to you. I bow to your greater wisdom. We're going to do some bow waves coming round again, a little bit further forward. Like when a boat's going through the water. If any of these are looking too, I was going to say too light, but that's not the right word, too solid. In fact, I might just do it anyway. It's really good to layer up. So I could put some of the lighter blue on top. So that'll give us like dark and light little bits. Okay, so now that we've essentially got everything in place, I'm going to lift this up and move it. Already it started to firm up a little bit. Give it a nice wee pat. I'm going to felt kind of all over the body, just tidying up the edges and felting in. So just if I want a little bit of edge, to go that way a little bit, I felt that way. If I want it out a bit, I felt that way. So I'm still going straight, but the direction of this, the direction of the straightness, will, <laughs> I never thought I'd say that, uh, 
depends on which way it'll move slightly when you're felting it in. Because it'll change as it felts. It'll make funny faces. She'll make funny faces at you. So, Loch Ness Monster. This is the second Loch Ness Monster. We did a 3D Loch Ness Monster two weeks ago. This is a flat one. So, my Loch Ness Monster facts should be uh, fresh in my brain, but they're not. Um, so, Loch Ness is a wonderful, it's the deepest loch in Scotland. It runs, we're in Fort William here, it runs between... Well, I won't say Fort William and Inverness, but there's other lochs. It runs on the Great Glen Way, which is a fault line that sort of chops off the top of Scotland. <laughs> and there's lochs all the way, uh, yeah, lochs all the way up, and you can cycle it and walk it. It's, um, it's really cool. Oh, we lost a light. Hold on. Which one went out? There we go, go back. And there is the myth that, the, sorry, the truth that Nessie Thank you! Oh, you're making me blush. Um, there's a myth, that, there's a truth that Nessie lives in Loch Ness. Now people have gone to find her with like sonar and things like that. But what they don't know is that because Loch Ness is so deep and there's so many underwater caves, but there is also an underwater tunnel from Loch Ness to Loch Mora. So Loch Ness is here, Loch Mora is across here. And Nessie goes to visit her cousin, Morag, who lives in Loch Mora. So whenever they're scanning the lochs, she's actually away visiting her cousin which is why they never find her. So there is another monster in Loch Morar called Morag. So if you want, this could be Morag. But some people say she's an ancient plesiosaur. Plesiosaur? Don't ask me how to pronounce dinosaur names as much as I love dinosaurs. And... No! Loch Morar is the deepest. Oh, I've been lying to so many people for so long and I didn't even know. I thought Loch... I know that River Moor is the shortest river, but I did not know that Loch Moor is the deepest. That's broken my mind. I don't believe you. Nope, I'm, I'm standing by that Loch Ness is the deepest. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, yes, no, I had I had a point to my ramblings. There was a point. Let's just check that she's looking good. Yep, looking good. If, so, the reason I get you guys to not finish it tonight is because your eyes get a little bit tired, essentially, of looking at it, and you might not think it's as good as it actually is. Because I get to this stage in my designs and I'm like, oh my god, it's terrible, no one's going to like it. And then what I do is send a photograph of it to my parents, because I love them. And they critique it and tell me how terrible it is. No. <laughs> the Loch Ness is the biggest boy. Okay, so Loch Ness is the biggest. But Loch Moor is the deepest. Right, I'll believe you on that one. Uh, so yeah, I always take a photograph of it and send it to my parents. Because when you look at it, not just staring down at this odd angle I'm looking at, but when you look at it straight on like this and send it to somebody else on the camera, you get like a fresh view of it and you can see anything that you want to change. But was it yesterday? Day before yesterday? Whenever I was designing this. Because I... Uh, <gasps> she might be an eel. We might have to change up the design then. <laughs> no. This Nessie is a plesiosaur. She's a dinosaur. But I sent this photo I sent the photo of this Nessie for to Mum and Dad. And they suggested that plesiosaurs have interesting patterns on them or could have interesting patterns on them. So you can do spots or stripes. So we're gonna have a little go 
at doing I don't know spots or stripes will will <laughs> yeah this is more ag now <laughs> so we're gonna using the two green still we're gonna do some patterning on her the first thing I'm gonna do is that line under there the lowest line of her jaw I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of the dark green and pop it in under there to give her a little bit of shadow now don't worry if this looks too dark straight away it probably will <gasps> hello Donna because we can layer up you have missed all of the nonsense we've decided this isn't Nessie this is Morag Nessie's cousin may or may not be an eel and even though I've uh, sorry I'm having two conversations <laughs> just now um, so I did the dark line and then put light on top of it which it's just adding a little bit of depth underneath you don't necessarily need to properly see it but the fact that it's there will in fact I'm a little bit more will make the difference so we're going to start attempting to put some patterning on her but I reserve the right to not like it and change it completely are we doing spots or stripes I'm in Fort William just I wanted to add in that <laughs> to the comments <laughs> so let's try out some spots and see if we like spots so you can just scrumple up a bit of the green Although I think a stripy Nessie would look really cute. That looks like an ear spot. Yeah. Oh my god, I think we have to do spotty Nessie. Because we've still got we've still got plenty of time. Plenty of time. I'm gonna put some spots. But yeah, you could do stripes, you can do spots. You can do interesting patterns. I'm letting this still look messy just now. I'm not worried about it looking really finished and pristine because I'm going to come back in a day or two and finish it off. Perthshire. Oh, that sounds so posh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she has the measles. <laughs> measles, Nessie. Yes. Love it. Oh, I really like that. That's really fun. And so the further away ones, I'm going to do smaller, smaller spots just to give it the impression that, to continue with the impression that she's far away. Well, not, not that small because that's just completely disappeared. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Yes, I'm enjoying the spotty Nessie. Oh, so I will, I will add another. Add while I'm doing this, some interesting felting facts. We've done the Nessie facts. I don't know any more. So we're felting on pre-felt, but you can felt on regular felt. You can even felt on some other fabrics as well, as long as they're not too tightly woven. So a lot, what I like to do sometimes is cut up. If I've accidentally felted a jumper in the washing machine, I will cut that up into squares and felt on that. Or you can buy felt from the shops and things like that. So you don't have to do it on the pre-felt. You can also put, add other materials. 
we'll see you in a second. Uh, you can also felt other materials, essentially, kind of. So you can felt with wool, with yarn wool. If you want to do like squiggly patterns with wool and things like that, you can also do that. Right, her little scale. Get your belly up there. That's better. I want a nice C shape there. That's better. And again, there I want a little bit more of a curve. There we go. And I want you to be a little bit narrower. Sorry, I'm talking to my felt. <laughs> Me oh! Measles Morag. That is officially her name now. Just because I like getting distracted by things, I'm going to put in a little bit more waves. Because I don't feel like there's enough waves. You can see on this one, let's bring this up to the camera. And hopefully you can see. I've got lots of little subtle waves coming round on those sort of angles there. So I'm going to start putting them in as well. Now would probably be a good time to put it in the frame just to check that it is the way I want it to be. And if we go around like this, it gives us the sort of the impression that the water is going round and we're looking back. Okay, so we're going to pop this in the frame to see if it is coming out right. So, do, 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 do. Take your frame. Aha, excellent. Hello, welcome back. You didn't miss anything but my ramblings. Um, we're going to try putting it in the frame now. So grab your frame and then just unscrew that little screw so that opens up the frame. And I like to unscrew it until it's just about at the end so it doesn't fall off and doesn't open all the way. Remove your mat. It's a lot easier to do this on a hard surface than to do it on a mat. In fact, it's basically impossible to do it on your mat. Do it on a hard surface. And I'm going to pop Nessie on top. And I'm just going to feel where the frame is sitting and make sure it's all nice. And then, so I want it to be a little bit further up. And then just scooch that. Nope. I want it to be that way. There we go. And then push it so it sits nicely. So that is, where's my camera? There. And then, not now, don't do it now because it's nowhere near finished. But when you come back in a couple of days and you've felted it all over, to finish it off, all you do is tighten this screw until it can tighten no more. And then this back, all you do is take a pair of scissors and chop off all the extra. Uh, I can show you an example. One second. So here's, here's one I made earlier that's not messy. So this one here, on the back you can see I've just chopped all the extra off and it just sits nicely in the frame ready to hang on your wall. But like I said, this is nowhere near finished felting. She's still quite messy, looking very cute, but still quite messy and needs to be felted up a good bit more. Oh yeah, I should probably do the, the, the likey subscribey things. I'm terrible at this. Uh, if you enjoyed my ramblings, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe below. We've got a Facebook group where people post their finished pictures. They don't have to be pictures from here. They can be just any pictures that you've felted. And advice is given, encouragement, all that jazz. 
Yeah, I've got, oh, yeah, very exciting. I now have a thousand subscribers on YouTube. It's very exciting. I did not think I would make it this far, but I have loved every second of it. And I'm very, very happy and very proud. I know, I got to the big number. It's scary. My eye seems to be wandering up her face. So I'm, I'm going to, especially just now because it's not felted in, going to move the eye a little bit down. There we go. That's better. Oh, I gave, I gave up on my spots. Thank you. It's very scary. There's lots of people. I feel the pressure. The pressure. No, I refuse. I'm not bowing to the pressure. I will still continue to nonsense with all of you. Oh, those spots are getting far too big. I'm tempted. Should we try? So we the spots are nice. I like the spots. Should we try stripes as well? Because we've still got... Yeah, we've still got a couple of minutes. So, there's pull off my spots and try stripes and see because if we don't like stripes that's fine we can change it back to spots the joy of felting sorry i get very excited about this i am basically just a child and all these bits don't worry these i use these in other projects they they all have one day i'll post on my instagram or on facebook the uh organizational system that is behind me for all the different colors of felt <laughs> which is a it's it's a thing of beauty i'm not gonna lie I, it makes me very happy so they all get put into different boxes and then they all get used for other projects i'm currently doing the same thing with my yarn scraps and it's making me very happy so i'm going to do stripes right this is my cunning plan but but on top of the stripe because this green is quite heavy or it's quite it's too much of a difference in my brain i'm going to i reserve the right to be wrong i'm gonna try by and put some of the other green on top Let's see how this goes. Following the edge to just take the stripes down a peg. Giving it a slightly more subtle Nope, don't like that. See, I reserve the right to change my mind. Going with spots again, but you're welcome to do stripes if you want to. We're just going to pop the spots back on. My eye's gone wonky. Oh yeah, so especially as I said before, I will say it again at this stage, it's still quite flexible. So it will move around and you've got the freedom to push stuff back to where it should be. Nope. <laughs> just nope. <laughs> I think the spots is the way forward. Just like a line of spot or oh, a line of spots just down her back. Yes. I could even reuse the old spots. That would, that would make sense. Oh, I like that. Yep. Bring back the measles. I brought back the measles. Don't worry. The measles have returned. Oh, yeah. Tiger. Yep. Because she is part. No, she's not part shark. But yes. Oh, we could also do. Oh, ooh, right. Okay. We could take some green. 
some of the some green, some of the darker green. And even do some spots on the inside. Oh. Now, these spots are very messy just now. When I come back uh, in a day or two, probably tomorrow while I'm in work, to finish her off, I'm going to tidy up these spots and they will become more circular. Because just now I'm very roughly just poking them in. Oh, we're almost at the end of the stream. You guys have you guys have have been with me for the whole time. I'm so excited about uh, the creature. So every so I'm I'm now down to I'm now doing I'm now doing words. <laughs> I'm now streaming twice a month. So the first one in the month is a two D one, and the set the third. Third Wednesday, no, third Saturday of the month is a 3D one. And I've just finished the 3D one that we're doing in two weeks. And oh my, would uh, who would like a sneak peek? And, or if you want a surprise. We can leave it and I won't show you. But it is the cutest. It was a request. So technically it's for a friend's birthday. She's already got it now. Um, so she knows about it. But her partner requested I design this for her. Oh, look at the spots. So are you ready? Are you ready? Shut your eyes if you don't want to see what we're doing in two weeks. We're doing the little hermit crab. Oh my, it's so cute. This is Herbert or Hermit, the hermit crab. Um, but you've got, so this is a basic shell. The aim is I'm going to try and design a couple of interesting different shells based on real, real shells. So this is... Look at his little, he's got little clawsies. Look at that little face. Oh, bring it down. There we go. You can look now if you didn't want to see. So that is in two weeks we will be doing Little Hermit. Okay, right. I'm going to, so we've got roughly seven minutes left. I'm going to do a good felting all over which is what you guys are going to do when you come back in a day or two. And just starting at the top and holding three needles together. Step, 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 step. Just step, 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 and all over. One of the questions uh, I get asked a lot is, how well do you felt it? Which is a very valid question, but I have a very terrible answer for it. And my answer is, how well do you want to felt it? Um, it's more nuanced than that. So depending on how it's going to be used after you're finished, depends on how and what you want it to look like, depends on how well you're going to felt it. So if it's going to be a high use like it's going to be touched a lot. People are going to, like in the shop, say, they're touching it. It's on the wall. It's getting poked and prodded and moved and things like that. Felt it more than you, like, felt it really quite well. Like this one, because it's going to be in the shop, it's not finished yet, but it is, like, it's well felted. It's not got much movement in it. It'll be felted a little bit more before it goes up i'm going to put spots on it might even move the eye um but if say it's going to be behind glass and you want it to have a sort of smoother look you don't have to felt it that much you can leave it slightly looser with a little bit more movement so it's up to you
<laughs> yeah, I know. The amount of times I stab myself when I'm doing the 3D ones. Don't worry, 2D ones will continue. They're just, they're going to be on the first Friday of the month and they will continue as normal. We're just adding in an extra on the third Friday of the month doing 3D ones. This one wasn't too... Because it's quite big, I could have my hands far away. I did still stab my... I think... Don't look too close, but there's some of my blood is in there. Yeah, that's the very nice thing about... I don't know if I want... Ah, I'll decide in two days. Ooh, I lost the needle. Oh yeah, count your needles in and out. I don't know if I said that. <laughs> now, finger guards are a, a touchy subject with me. <laughs> yes, you can get leather finger gauntlets for your fingers, which I used at the beginning to try and stop stabbing myself. But then I got far too confident and was stabbing so hard I would stab right the way through the leather and still stab my finger until it bled. So I stopped using them because I've lost the white. Or have I used all the white? Let's find some more white. Uh, so yeah, so I'm more cautious and stab myself less. Now I've got some green overspill, which I don't want. So I'm just going to pull that out. There we go. That's better. You can do that as well. So if there's any overspill that you don't want to be there, I'll just flick it up with my needle and pull out. Oh, she's looking so cute. Right. Oh, yeah, I was using the light coloured ones. That may be why. Because the needles just went straight through. <laughs> and I just stabbed it quite hard, stabbed myself. I would like to say that I've learnt my lesson. But I'm not sure if I have. <laughs> I don't know if I'm that smart. You can see here, it's, uh, I'm going to just tidy up the edge by putting some blue on top. Just because I feel that edge is getting a little bit messy. Now this is what I'm going to do for another hour or two. Not hour, half an hour or so uh, when I come back to it. Is just to add little bits, play with it, use your imagination. I've got the groundwork for you but it's up to you guys and I love seeing what how you guys change it and do different things to it makes me very happy but I'm going to put this in the frame and call it done for the evening and then me and Pina are going to go home and have some dinner where did I put the frame under there in fact why have I got two frames <laughs> I think they're breeding Let's put more rag in the centre there. Tighten it up. And then just to cheat, I'm going to just fold that in. And we can see that, oh, there's bleeps going on outside. She's wonky. There we go. The finished morag. I'm happy with that. Oh, <laughs> yep, I did. I'm super happy with that. Look at Nessie going off into the distance. I think actually, no, I want her to be a little bit higher up. Wait, higher up or lower down? 
Well, definitely not that way. There we go. I might move her tail slightly so it fits better in. I think I will move her tail slightly. But there we go! Morag is definitely as cute as Nessie. Thank you very much for felting with me. I've had a lovely evening. Nonsense has been achieved. Tick. Peanut is... Oh! She heard her name and now she has woken up. Peanut is says hello and good night and I will see you in two weekends two Fridays thank you my squishies have a lovely evening have a lovely weekend oh and Sylvia message me message me your channel please <laughs>